Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, we'll be giving you five tips for growing peppers in the summer months. So once you're getting into the summer months, you wanna make sure your peppers are not hindered in any way. You just wanna keep them going strong. And we have five really important tips to make sure your plants stay on track. If you wanna learn our entire process of growing peppers, check out our ebook, Growing Perfect Peppers. It's all about growing peppers from seed to harvest. We grow a ton of plants every year. And in the book, we share our process of growing from start to finish. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description. Okay, so our first tip is to water consistently. And that means don't water too much and don't water too little. You really wanna keep on top of watering on a consistent basis because underwatering or overwatering can cause issues for the plant. Now, underwatering stresses the plant. You'll see the leaves drooping, flowers may drop off in severe cases. So you don't wanna let the plants get to that point. Make sure you're watering before that happens and you'll just sort of pick up a knack for it as you grow more plants. But overwatering can be a major issue as well, especially in cases where you have poor drainage. It doesn't happen so much with potted plants, but if you're growing in the ground, you may have poor draining soil, heavy clay soil. So you'll wanna do something about that. But in the meantime, just try not to overwater the plants. Now, inconsistent watering is the main culprit behind blossom end rot, and it more often affects tomato plants, but it can affect peppers, especially large sweet varieties like bell peppers. You'll get black spots on the bottom of the pepper, and that's usually caused by inconsistent watering. So going through a heavy drought phase and then dumping water on the plant, that can lead to blossom end rot because it makes it harder for the plant to supply calcium to the fruits as they develop. And that leads to unformed skin on the bottom of the peppers, leading to blackening. One other tip related to watering is to mulch your plants. We talk about this all the time. Just throw some mulch around the base of the plant that will help retain the moisture in the soil and prevent evaporation off the surface. Okay, so tip number two is to get on a consistent feeding schedule, and this mostly applies to potted plants. So if you're growing in containers, you need to supply the plant with food. Most soils come with some nutrients built in, but as you get into the summer months and the plants are growing fast, producing peppers, producing seeds, you'll need to feed them. And during this stage, you'll wanna use a bloom stage fertilizer or something with less nitrogen and more phosphorus and potassium. A lot of fertilizers kind of skimp out on the potassium. They'll give you lots of phosphorus, but not potassium. And pepper plants really need a lot of both of those and not too much nitrogen. This is Tiger Bloom from Fox Farm. It's a 284, so again, lower nitrogen, higher phosphorus and potassium. Uh, you'll just wanna look at the proportions of each N, P, and K. You wanna lower N, higher P and K during this stage of growth. Now with inorganic fertilizers, you wanna make sure you don't go too heavy on it. Make sure you're following the instructions from the manufacturer so that you're not overfeeding the plants because overfeeding can be just as bad as underfeeding. You don't wanna burn the plants with excess nutrients. Okay, so tip number three is to pick fruits as they ripen. Most varieties of peppers, we prefer to wait until they're fully ripe, they've changed color from green to red or whatever their final color is. But some varieties you'll pick before they're ripe and you wanna make sure you stay on top of harvesting. As you harvest, that encourages the plant to produce more flowers, more fruits. The energy can be redistributed to producing more fruits for you and thus increasing your overall yield. So for example, jalapenos and banana peppers are picked earlier typically for their crunchiness and unripe flavor. And as you pick off those unripe peppers, as, as you use them, the plant will then be able to focus energy on producing more. If you watched our video last year where we harvested our ghost pepper plant, we waited for all of the peppers to ripen before harvesting. Well, we could have gotten more ghost peppers overall if we were picking them as they turned red throughout the season. But that was an exception. We wanted to have this plant with a ton of ripe peppers and you can do that if you want, but again, you'll be sacrificing your overall harvest. Okay, so for our next two tips, we're over in our raised bed garden with some pepper plants. So tip number four is to watch the weather and plan accordingly. So I'll give two examples here. The first is watch for high heat weather. Peppers don't like it too hot. They kind of like to be in that 75 to 85 degree Fahrenheit range. And if it goes much beyond that, say above 90 or especially into the hundreds Fahrenheit, then you're definitely gonna wanna shade them and get them out of that heat. In high heat conditions, you'll see flowers dropping, you'll see drooping, and the plants will sort of shut down some of their processes. So by providing some shade, you're decreasing that stress. So a couple ways you can do this, if you have a raised bed, you'll wanna have some sort of structure built to shade them with some shade cloth. You can use 40 to 50% shade cloth during those heat waves. 
Um, and this is not shade cloth, this is actually floating row cover, but we could drape this temporarily. If you're using shade cloth, you wanna make sure there's still airflow around the plants. You don't wanna completely enclose them. That might actually make the temperatures higher. But essentially the shade cloth will block out some of the sunlight and thereby help reduce the temperature around the plants. Of course, if you have potted plants, it's a lot easier. You can just move them into a shady location next to a structure or under a tree is a good option. And this can be especially helpful in the early afternoon hours when the temperatures are highest. Now, of course, during the summer months, storms are common. So if you're expecting a thunderstorm and heavy precipitation, such as hail or even rain, you wanna make sure that you plan ahead for that as well. Shade cloth or even floating row cover like we have here can be useful for that. Just using that same fabric can protect the plants from hail. Hail can be really damaging, so if there's any chance of hail, you really wanna make sure you get something over the plants. And if your plants are really small, you can even use an upside down bucket, just kind of cover the plant temporarily, of course, to protect it during the storm and then take it back off. Again, if you have potted plants, it's much easier. Just move them into the garage or under a deck or even under a tree, again, to protect them during the storm. Now, during storms, wind is also a big problem. So, of course, we always recommend staking our plants. No matter what, we stake at the beginning of the season just to provide that support and protect them from the wind from an early age, and that helps protect them later on in windy conditions. And finally, our last tip is to protect from pests and diseases. And the first thing we'd recommend is to bottom prune your plants. We have a whole video about bottom pruning and mulching your plants. It really helps prevent soil-borne diseases from getting into your peppers, from soil splashing, and mulching also helps that as well. When it rains heavily, if you have a layer of mulch, the soil won't splash up as much onto the plant. Now for pests, I'd really recommend knowing your allies, knowing which bugs are actually good. We posted a picture recently of a ladybug larva on our pepper plants and didn't really give much context. And we actually got a lot of negative feedback. What is that monster, you know? It kind of looks like a bad bug and you might end up killing it if you don't know that it's actually good. Now ladybug larvae are actually more ravenous, more hungry than the adult version of ladybugs because they're growing. So they're eating lots of aphids and thrips and whiteflies and all the bad guys. So if you didn't know that a ladybug larva or a hoverfly larva was a good thing, then you might end up getting rid of your friends. Of course, in order to get those good guys into your garden, you're gonna to need to plant beneficial plants, companion plants for your peppers, such as alyssum and cosmos and other flowering plants that will attract those bugs to the garden. We have a video all about companion planting with peppers, so definitely check that out if you haven't already, and you can plan ahead for next season. So those are our top five tips for growing peppers during the summer months. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any additional tips to share, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.